Well, last week, our film critic, Richard Roper, gave a big spend on this movie. Mm -hmm. It's set and shot right here in Chicago. The movie is about a young black man who is arrested for the murder of a white classmate. His father fights for his son's vindication. Here's a clip from Canal Street. We've got one senior citizen who claims he saw some red lights far away in the dark. You know what the county's got? My son covered in that boy's blood. Okay, but even you have to admit that this is good. Okay, plus there's still no gun. And no bullet to trace it to. When it comes down to it, that could be the only thing that exonerates Corey. In this town, they've already strung the noose. No one's gonna do the heavy lifting for us. Frank's right. Now, maybe this doesn't seal the deal, but at least it's a shadow of proof that there might be somebody else. So find the bullet. Please welcome the film's writer, producer, and director, Ryan Lamar. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Your parents did a great job naming you. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on the movie because Richard Roper gave it a big, big spin I last know. week. It's getting a lot of buzz, a lot of success. But I think what I find most interesting is you actually wrote this script in 2005? Yes, yes. Me and my writing partners, John Nitter and Adam Key, wrote this in 2005, moved out to L.A., and it took us over 13 years to get this thing done. Wow, it's got to feel like like vindication for you just to yeah. have this thing see the light of day. I can sleep. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think what I think is most interesting is that you wrote it in 2005, but it's so relevant 13 mm -hmm. years later today in 2018. Yeah, that's the, that's the unfortunate thing. Yeah. You know, because a movie like this shouldn't still be relevant. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it shows you how, for, how far we still need to go, you know, to get there. Right, what inspired you back then to write it? You know, in 2005, things were not looking good in Chicago. You know, I, have, I was having friends that were being accused of crimes. Um, I have a, a best friend that's still incarcerated right now for a crime he didn't commit. That was in 1998. Mm. You know, yeah. so when you're, when you're growing up in the city of Chicago and you're seeing these type of things, and you're, but you're also seeing a lot of the positive stuff. Because right. this film was made to uplift you when you leave the theater. Mm -hmm. This was to, to instore your faith, right. you know, to shine a, a, a positive light on Chicago. If you know, we, we need that in Chicago more for than sure. That, you know? right. For sure. So would you even say that you wrote it loosely based on your life, your own experiences? Yes, I was the kid that moved, you know, from the inner city and was blessed to be able to go to the suburbs. You know, um, I, w I did get to experience both sides of the track. And I was able to um, experience this beautiful city and everything that it had to offer, right. you know. And so when you come through that and my writing partners being able to experience that, we were able to really, you know, showcase everything yeah. that Chicago has to offer. Yeah, yeah, set up the premise a little bit more. I know we, we talked about it, but give us a little bit more detail. Well, you know, um, you know that kid that uh, played by Brashear Gray, you know, uh, from New Edition mm -hmm. and Empire, you know, moving to, the, to moving to the suburbs, moving to Winneka, of all places. Michael T. Williamson, um, you know, he, he gets a promotion that he's been waiting for. And literally that same day, you know, uh, Brashear's character gets into a tussle with that bully, right? The next day, he, that, that bully uh, uh, shows up missing. He winds up dead. And he is accused of that murder. And it shows, like, not only is this trial the biggest trial in Chicago, but it, it brings up a, a very important thing that we're seeing now in America, the court of public opinion. So he's already guilty mm -hmm. before he's even gone to trial. We see that in, in everyday news sure. every day. And so it really turns the mirror on everybody to show not only the, the things that we're, that we're faced with on a daily basis, but how we're gonna get that conversation out and get, get to the, the crux of everything so that we can be a part of the solution and possibly change. America. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you got a lot of local people in the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, Kendra G. Yeah. That's right, we just had her here. She yes. was talking about uh, it. Yeah. Shout out to WGCI. Yeah. Man Cow. They, you know, he, he, <laughs> he did his thing. He did his thing. Movie. <laughs> he did his thing, and people are going to be really <laughs> surprised at Man Cow in this film and Kendra. Uh, Harry Lennox, a Chicago native. Oh, yeah, we love Harry. You yeah. Know, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, LaRoyce Hawkins, you, you know. Oh, yeah. Royce. Yes, John Seda. You know, we, we had a lot of Chicago. Lyric Ross really came through and really right, blessed right. this project. Sounds I feel good. like I want to know a little bit more about you. How long have you been in the film business, and how did you even get your start? You know, there's a teacher named Mr. Wonderlick who put a camera in my hand at Manny's High School in, nice. in two in, no, in 2001. So I didn't come out the womb, you know, like, I want to be a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, put that in my hand after I, after basketball was not, I stopped growing. So <laughs> I wasn't going to be, you know, LeBron James. <laughs> and, you know, and I just fell in love with film. Yeah. And then, you know, it, right after I fell in love with film, a beautiful man, a beautiful man by the name of Bernie Mac uh, really 
um, blessed me at a very young age in my life and showed me how, how charismatic and how humble you can be at a very high level. And I never forgot that. He gave me my first job. Yeah. yeah. With Mr. 3000. Mr. Yeah. 3000. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. love Bernie, man. man I yeah. love, Chicago legend. I love that man. Yeah. That man gave me my, my start in my career. Right. You know, I worked on a Bernie Mac show for four years, like yeah. got out to L.A. So like he really took care of me when I got right. there. Well, Ryan, we're so proud of you. And thank you so much for being here. Make sure you guys go out. Simple. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going this weekend to see Canal Street. It is in theaters now. Be sure to check it out and support a Chicagoan.